We're now going to continue with this uh, theme of diversity, of how it's explored and how it's practiced with uh, two remarkable people. And so I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Maria Arias, who's the Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion at Comcast, and from UPS, Rosemary Turner, uh, who is uh, one of their regional presidents and has a, a deep experience in all of this. I'm looking forward to kind of this, uh, I'm not sure who's interviewing who, since uh, they're both so accomplished, but this should be a great fireside chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. It's a real pleasure to be here, um, honestly, to see all of those that are so interested in social innovation. Uh, this is my first time attending your conference, and yet I feel I've learned so much already. I'm here today on behalf of Comcast. Has anybody heard of Comcast? <laughs> but you've all heard of Comcast because you're turning on your TVs and you're looking at programs and hopefully Okay, slide it up. And hopefully you're loving the movies that, we, uh, that they put out. But today, what we want to talk to you about is how they internally have turned their focus toward what is the growth of the future, that being diversity. So here I'm with my good, good friend, Maria. It's been so long. I just saw week in Philly where we went to one of our joint diversity council meetings. Sorry about that. We attended a joint uh, diversity council meeting. I am a member of the joint uh, diversity council. I was asked and I'm proud to say that I was one of the original members asked to join Comcast uh, joint diversity council and here uh, at the time, I lived in Philadelphia, and now I live in San Francisco. Um, and so we're real pleased today that you take time to speak with us, or allow us to speak with you about what Comcast has actually done. So Maria, Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion for Comcast. So tell us about Comcast DNI. What 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 is it all about? Why did you do it? And how does it fit into your company's model? Thank you, Rosemary, and it's great to be here in San Francisco. I envy that you got to move here. So I just want, it's very interesting when you talk about how does DNI really fit in at Comcast, and when you look at what Comcast is now, it's re really a leading media and technology company. On this slide, you see all our different company brands, and so when you look at transforming a culture of a company that has so many different businesses and so, mu so much rich history, um, what it really comes down to is developing a structure. Comcast really has had a spirit of inclusion for a long time. Ralph Roberts, our founder, who passed away this past year, really had a family, a sense of family and community. Ironically enough, I'm a product of a diversity boot camp. I'm a lawyer by training, did government affairs, but I was hired because there was a lack of diversity in my division and the division president took me under his wing. So we had lots of pockets of diversity initiatives across the company, but the NBC Universal transaction presented us with a unique opportunity to really build the structure and foundation. And as Rose just mentioned, our external joint diversity council that you see here listed on the slide is a key component of our governance. Unlike other companies where there's a focus on perhaps on supplier diversity and workforce, we've really developed an integrated plan where my team, my office, works on partnering with every different major business unit and with the different leaders in these different areas, whether it's workforce, supplier diversity, programming and accessibility, and community investment. And to the comments made just a little bit earlier about really speaking to your audience and to your consumers and your customers, one of the things that we've done that we're really proud of, in addition to all the accomplishments in these areas over the past four years, is the work that we've done in the accessibility space with a talking guide, not just in English, but also in Spanish, and our centers of excellence that speak to our bilingual customers as well as our customers with accessibility issues, our disabled employees. So Maria, let's uh, 
let them into it a little more. Tell us, being the largest media and technology company, what's your approach? How did you approach DNI? So our approach was really to do a quantitative and qualitative analysis. We did what we call a benchmark study um, in 2011, post the, the NBC Universal transaction. As Rose can attest, as part of our external diversity council, they get no less than probably 300 plus pages of data. Yes, quite a bit. <laughs> and so it's really looking at who you are and baselining it, because as the old adage says, what gets measured gets done. And so we started with that, and I'll never forget um, when I was meeting with a business unit leader and they said, oh, you know, these numbers. And I said, the numbers are what the numbers are. There's only one way we can go, hopefully, and that's up. So we really did a benchmark study, and we created metrics, not just for workforce, but for our programming initiatives. We measure how many opportunities, how many choices do our customers have for multicultural programming? How many online and on-demand hours are we providing on a monthly basis? Um, on procurement, our tier one spend, we're the first media and technology company, number 21 on the list, but the first media and technology to make it into the billion dollar round table. And that was a goal that was set by our external diversity council. In community investment, we're a company that has a long history in giving, but we've had a unique focus on minority led and women led in serving organizations and expanded our giving to the LGBT community, organizations that serve the disabled, veterans, and also an often ignored community, which is the Native American community as well. And obviously in workforce, getting diversity at the top levels. So we're really proud that we've increased our diversity, but we still have a long way to go. Something that we've done is that we've set aspirational goals at Comcast, which is to be 33% people of color and 50% women as an aspirational goal for the future. And so when you think about the transformative future that you're looking toward, how, how will you, you, you mentioned measuring, and you mentioned, mentioned assessments and collaboration. But one of the things before I ask you another question I'd, I feel propelled to tell you all is that when we first started as the external DNI group, we were somewhat surprised that they, Comcast would invite us in the way that they have. They have actually, you know, at the beginning it was all about education. We were learning about the business principles of Comcast. Uh, we are made up, just to give you some insight, we're external, but there are four groups of about five to seven folks that represent Asian American, African American, um, women, of course, and Latinos. We also have representatives for people with disabilities, um, with veterans, Native Americans, and of course the LBGT community. So with that group of 40 plus leaders that represent um, backgrounds in politics, obvious business, and also civil rights, we come together and for Comcast to have opened their vests the way that they have to us and we do complain about the number of pages that we get on a regular basis but they have opened their entire books to us and they look to us for advice they look to us to make sure that as they make decisions they take into account what we think how we feel about it but more importantly, I think anything else, the perspectives, the diverse perspectives that we bring on the council has really made the difference. What would you say? I would agree, Rose. I think when I look back at 2011, yes. and I'd love your view as well, when we first started the process in the council, it was about um, really learning and education and also about making sure. I mean, part of my role was making sure that we built the foundation and the structure so that all of the public diversity and inclusion commitments that we made as part of the NBC Universal transaction were completed and met, and if not exceeded, overachieved, which we've proven that we have in some, um, but also to build the foundation and kind of re-roll and look back. I mean, some of the best practices recommended, for example, um, by the communities and the civil rights organizations that were involved in the transaction, focus groups. It's really interesting when you do focus groups across the entire company at different levels and you get the same result, whether you're a person of color, a woman, or a white male. And for those of us who had been for, at the company for a while, 
there perhaps was not much of a surprise, but I think for some of our management, it was. And it's really looking deep into the culture and trying to see who you really are and who you want to be. So definitely, definitely, it's been quite an experience. And so now we're on to our Master Strategic Plan 2.0, because as you just heard Maria say, we've achieved and recognized our goals that we set out some five years ago. So now we're looking farther beyond and placing stretch goals into our strategic plan. And I think what makes us even more impactful today is that uh, we've put some pretty strong goals out there. You want to talk about our aspirational goals? Everyone has recognized goals, but when we speak of aspirational goals as the JDC, now we're on to big and better things that really set Comcast as a media mogul into the next transformation of how do we not only grow with our audiences, with our customers that they have, but also internally. And so now we're into partnerships. I'm really proud to say that I feel like I work for Comcast, Which as well as uh, UPS. And I tell you why, because I'm part of the Comcast uh, care, caring for a day. I receive, um, information on what's going on internally, externally about Comcast so that I can share it with my networks. And again, we are moving toward what the MSP.2.0.0 will be. And so we feel as though we're part of Comcast, I think. Yeah, that, and that's Or terrific. maybe I'm too pushy. No, no. Um, as Rosemary mentioned, we have 41 members on our council representing all, most of the major national civil rights organizations and business leaders like Rosemary who lead billion dollar businesses because we need a balance. We need a balance of making sure that we're doing the right things from a public policy perspective, but also that as we're developing and driving initiatives that they make sense for the business. So when, for me, what is success? It's when I see, obviously, the workforce numbers moving, but when our company stands up and makes commitments to increase the diversity, not just of our overall workforce, but of our leadership ranks. I mean, women, the interesting statistic is that we are only 35% as of year in 2011 in the overall workforce, but we're 40% at the director level and 36% at VP, um, VP and above. For people of color, we're actually higher in the overall workforce, which is about 41. At directors, we're in the 23 and then it, it goes down to 19 so obviously a place where we need a lot of work and we also thanks to members like Rose and, and our other external council members are also very focused on women of color um, and so it's really driving success and driving the accountability and also our veteran initiatives we committed to do a couple of thousand hires we overachieved that yes. and now we have a very public commitment as part of our goals and our new strategic plan to hire 10,000 veterans across the company, and not just veterans, but their families and, and everyone in the military community um, by 2017. And um, there are new aspirational goals as part of some regulations issued by the government for people with disabilities, which are aspirational goals as well. So looking at that, looking at what we can do to really drive community investment to the minority and female communities and other diverse communities, as well as continuing to increase um, our tier one direct spend with diverse uh, companies and also our tier two spend, which is to encourage major suppliers, for example, the Cisco's of the world that we partner with, that, you know, that we spend so much money on because they are the main producers as well as other companies of our set-top boxes and our digital platforms, that they also, and we've been driving progress in that as well. So as our time comes to an end, and we hope we'd be able to take some questions, but tell me, what's the return on investment? You, when I think about it, I, it's something that was also mentioned by the previous speaker, human capital. I mean, your employees are your biggest assets. You can own real estate, you can own computers, you can own software, but at the end of the day, who creates it? Except for, you know, in the future, there may be the, that artificial intelligence that I'm sure people in this audience are working on. But at the end of the day, it's your people because they will make or break you. And secondly, it's really the transformative culture. I mean, I remember in the first couple of years since I actually worked out in the field and I'd say, oh, you know, it's all happening at headquarters, but all the bodies are in the field and it's not there. And now 
when I come out to California, in fact, I'm meeting with the California team tomorrow, and to see what they're doing, it's transforming the culture and the connection to our customers and our audiences. The fact that the talking remote is a wonderful tool, not just for people with disabilities, but also for our senior citizens, the elderly, the Spanish guide, you know, getting diverse programming, getting diverse newscasters in front and behind the camera and the talent behind the camera as well. I mean, we're working on all of that and that's really success for us. Well, I'm most proud to be a part of the JDC and of course uh, here today to talk to you about Comcast and how they have truly made an ultimate commitment to diversity and inclusion. Um, we also get to see some movies on occasion when we visit. Um, so there's one coming out pretty soon that's going to be awesome. Um, let me just say on a serious note, this is not uh, just about social values. This is about a business philosophy. And you heard Maria speak to their founding uh, father, Ralph Roberts, and how they have continued that and looked to build on it. So they've stepped out. There are lots of DNI uh, councils out there in the uh, Fortune 500 but none have the commitment that Comcast has to diversity and inclusion, both internally and externally, to bring the kinds of folks, that leaders that they have brought in to, uh, again, help them with this journey. So it's been our pleasure to speak with you this morning. And thank you so much, Rose, for coming. I mean, when I called her and asked her if she would do this, she said, absolutely. And I think that's really a testament of a very successful advisory council it's, it's people who are there to help you, they're there to nudge you, they're ma there to make you better, but they're also willing to come out and support you. So thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.